Hi, and welcome to this data demo for the South Florida Data Commons. I'm Karen Bolter. I'm a climate policy and geospatial analyst at the South Florida Regional Council. And what you're seeing here is our draft website for the Data Commons. When you go to the website, you can see a lot of information about what the Data Commons is, who can use it, and how it's useful. And when you scroll down, you can see some example data stories that we've done for Broward, Miami-Dade, and Monroe County within these six sectors. I'm going to hand it over to Vince now, who's going to focus on one of the data stories for Broward County. Hi, everyone. My name is Vince. I'm a data analyst here at the Council. And today, I'm going to walk you through a sample story centered around Broward County. So here we are looking at a map of origin points and destination points. So the origin data is shown in teal and the destination points are shown in magenta. So what that refers to is the start of a worker's commute and the end of a worker's commute. So in other words, their home location and their work location. So you can see areas that are shaded in dark teal. There's generally a higher number of origin points and areas in magenta, there's a higher number of destination points. So this can help us understand the flow of people within our county and also areas of high residential area and high economic activity potentially. So on the left here you have an information tab. So here you can provide us a narrative or analysis, a title for your visualization. It's also information regarding the data and the data sources. So in the Charts tab, if we move down here, you can provide additional information about your visualization. So just as an example, there are hundreds to choose from. Just as an example, we've included five here. So the employment industry by job location, the number of jobs, travel time to work, commute type, and also some raw population statistics. So what's neat about this is that as the user scrolls over the visualization, the charts dynamically update. So you can get information for the region as a whole in addition to specific geographies. So as you may have noticed, there are also some point features labeled on this map. So if we jump over to the annotations tab, you can see that the first three are points that we have identified that could be possible explanations for why the given census tracts are shaded as magenta as they are. So the first one is sawgrass mills, which is obviously a large center of employment, and two and three are airports and also industrial areas in the county. So that could account for the high number of destination points within those geographies. The fourth one, on the other hand, we have left open-ended, and we have not specifically identified a potential reason for the high number of destinations. So what we've done instead is asked an engagement question. So this allows a user to provide their feedback, their opinions, or, or their explanations on what may be causing this. And so these can take the form of open-ended questions, or polls, or a mixture of the two and can also be used to acquire email information um, and the results of a poll can also be exported. So while not shown in this visualization, um, let's jump down to the Layers tab here just to show you an example. So this allows a user to add even more data to a visualization in the form of point features or polygon features. So let's, just as an example, let's turn this on. So here's a polygon layer that shows Broward County Parks, shown in orange there. And you can turn on multiple layers of these and turn them off as you see fit. So the last tab down here at the bottom is just some settings we should touch on. So you can adjust the contrast of your map, adjust the base map, you can get some satellite imagery if you would like and also the colors of your map display. 
So thanks for walking through this brief tutorial. I'm going to turn it back over to Karen. So this visualization is just one example of the features that can be created with this tool. And the overall intention for the data common is to really put forward data that's going to drive decision making and also create a learning community. So we plan to put together a lot more of these trainings and discussions and really creating a conversation about what's happening in our community and how can we make it better. We really look forward to your feedback and your participation as we grow this data common together and really move things forward to push progress in our region. Thank you so much, and please, please email me if you have any questions. It's kbolter at sfrpc.com, and I hope to be following up with you soon. Please take our survey about becoming a partner and what your interest is so that we can involve you and all work together. Thank you so much.